In this tutorial, we will change the appearance of the character and the smoothness of its movement using separate image frames. You will need to download the project from the link in the description below. And once you've downloaded it, open up the 2D side scroller template, then and in there go to the asset folder and then open up 2D bare bones template and this file will open. You may also want to download the robot free sprites zip file as well. So you have four main options for character animation which are timestamped in the description below. You can first paint directly over the robot frames provided here using them as a template or secondly you could use your own frames either that you've painted or downloaded elsewhere even if they have a higher quantity than these which will give you much smoother the animation. I will cover both of these in this tutorial. The third way, which I won't cover today, is to extract characters from a sprite sheet and use that instead. And the fourth way is to use a rigged character which you can animate directly in Unity. Links to these two options are in the description below. To add your own character while learning the least about Unity as possible, go to the textures area on the left hand side of Unity down here and there's a folder called tutorial images. Go in there and there's something called ghost robot and there is an idle jump and run animation and these are obviously what you see here on the screen you can see here we've got running idle where the robot breathes not that they should breathe that much and then jumping as well and a falling these are all contained in these three folders if i go into run you can see that i've kept the number of frames as small as possible so that you won't have to paint as many different frames when you go over these the first step is to right click on any of these sprites and do show in explorer this will bring up the unity project file and specifically highlight the sprite that you've just selected and from this one within in your finder or explorer you can right click and do open with and choose Photoshop 20 whatever you've got and it will open up the PNG image there. The robots are already faded to help us identify the difference later on but you can reduce the opacity even more if you like but you can use this robot as a template to paint over either using pixel art or digital painting if you're a good artist or vectors if you know how to use Illustrator. Now this is not a digital painting or how to do pixel art tutorial I'm just going to focus on how to actually get the sprites into Unity. So for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to just paste in pixel art from another file. Um, but obviously you should have your own or could be creating your own right now. If you are pasting in pixel art whilst resizing it after you've clicked to resize it, you need to choose interpolation as nearest neighbor to stop things from getting blurry when you resize them. So I'm doing pixel art, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna choose the nearest possible uh, pose. So when you're bringing in your own character or painting your own character, it's important to note where the feet of the ghost robot are here and make sure that the feet of your character are in the same place and try and find a point on the robot that doesn't really move left or right very much which for this robot seems to be the head so I'm just going to kind of line up the right hand side of this robot with the side of the ghost in the background and the floor as well. You can turn view and turn snapping on or off if you want to be more free turn snap off and then you can just do it by eye like that and when you're ready to save the image you can turn off the background layer by poking it in the eye and then do file save and you're going to want to overwrite the ghost robot file. So I'm going to save this as a PNG and I'm going to make sure I've clicked on the whatever frame it is. So this is run one. I'm going to click on run one and I'm going to hit save. If you're on a Mac, it will automatically come up with run one copy. You must delete the word copy and make sure it says exactly that so that you overwrite the file. So do that, hit save. Do you want to overwrite the file? Yes, you do. And now uh, you can hit OK on the PNG options there. And then you can do the exact same thing for the next frame. To drag in the next frame, find it in your browser and then go to drag it into the dark gray area at the top of Photoshop here. And now it's time to get the next frame in. So for the next frame, instead of importing the file into Photoshop and overwriting that, we're gonna always work from this one and overwrite the files from here. So once you've finished this frame and you've saved it as a PNG, you could turn the opacity quite low down so you only can just about see it. And then you can paste in or paint your next layer on top. 
up as a new layer and make sure the next robot is the correct size. Now you might want to start to use rulers Photoshop to help you with this. So if you hit enter and do control R or command R on a Mac and drag a ruler down for the top, drag one down for where the feet should be and drag one down for where the head is up there. When you're ready to save and you may want to drag in another ruler like this and I'm going to say that I want the head to be the main area where I will track on and I'll put a ruler line there so the next frame of the head should be exactly there. When you're ready to save this image turn off the layer beneath it, do file, save as, save it as a PNG and this time save it up the next one which for me is run three and hit save, overwrite the file, yes, hit OK. Similar thing again, put the opacity of this layer down, make a new layer and paint on that. You can see the next frame, the character has the farthest leg back a bit and the next leg coming forward. So you can paint that. You can paste this in over the top if you need to or use it as a reference. And again, when you're ready to save that and it's all lined up, you can turn off the layer underneath. Do Control Shift S if you want to be faster and go to PNG. And the next one along is run five. Hit save. You want to replace it? Yes. And the final frame is where the closest leg is forward and the farthest leg is backwards. And you can finally save that one as well. And if you were to do that to both the idle and jump animations as well, when you go back into Unity and you can see that the run sprites have already changed. And if you hit play at the top, but you can see the robot walks around like this without any problem, without us doing any programming or working with any nodes or anything like that. So this may not be the most streamlined way of working, but this is the way that you can learn the least about Unity if you don't want to learn that much about it and you just want to show off your character artwork, for example. So just to clarify, you were in the run folder here to come out of here and see different folders to change. You just click in the word before the word run, which is ghost robots, and you can go into jump and change those and you can go into idle and change those. And once you've done that, your character will be complete. Next, you may want to use more frames for a more fluid animation or import totally different character sprites. To help with this, I've included a folder in the link in the description called Robot Free. Each animation here is about 10 frames long instead of the four that I've supplied you with in Unity. So this should look quite smooth. So to start with, we'll need to go back to the main textures folder on the left of Unity over here. And we're gonna to need to import your robot free zip file. So make sure you extract that by doing right click, extract all and hit extract. If you're on a Mac, you can just double click on it and it should take you inside there where you've got a robot free folder. Drag that robot free folder into the textures area of Unity. Just make sure it says textures here before you let go and it will import all of these frames. So if you go into robot free, you can see you've got the basic ones which we're using in this tutorial. And you've also got a folder called PNG, which contains much more detailed and higher frame rate animations. At the moment, you can see they've all got black backgrounds as if they weren't transparent. And if you try to drag any of them into Unity, it won't let you because they are not actually sprites yet. They are just images which it can't understand. So you have to select all of these frames. So I'm, I'm clicking on the top one up here, number one, it says dead one, and then go right to the bottom, scroll down, hold shift on the keyboard and click on the final frame at the bottom right so they're all selected. Then at the top right of Unity, change the texture type from default to sprite 2D and UI. And then you can hit apply because my game view is down here. I mean, it's kind of blocking that off, but you should be able to see apply if you can't scroll to it and hit apply. Now you can see the black background has disappeared. And now that you've got these little triangles which show you the sprite which it has extracted from those images. So we're just going to focus on idle, running and jumping from in here. We're going to ignore death and things like that. So let's start off with the idle animation. The first thing you need to do is select each of the sprites for each frame. So if you tell Unity to use these with the clear background, it won't be happy. You have to uh, select these ones. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for the idle bunch of them here and hit the triangle for all of these. 
and then I'm going to hold control on the keyboard this time not shift but control and control click all of these dark gray sprites and we want to tell unity to use these as an animation sequence so you can right click on any of them do create and then go to animation immediately name this new animation I'm going to call mine character I'm not going to call mine robot because that's already being used elsewhere in this particular tutorial and so is the word ghost so you can call yours anything you like except for ghost and robot I'm going to call mine character underscore idle and then hit enter and that is now an animation instruction which is ready to be used later on let's do the same thing now for running so scroll down to where you can see the run animation here hit the little play button for each of the run frames to reveal the sprite there are eight run ones i'm going to hold control and click on all of these frames like this and then right click create animation i'm going to call this one character underscore run now the jump is slightly more challenging we need to break it down into the part of the jump which is jumping up the apex of the jump the fall of the jump and the land of the jump so look in here for the jump frames from 1 to 10 I'm going to expand all of them at once all the way up to 10 but I'm only going to select a few at a time so I'm going to focus now on the beginning of the jump where the robots just about to jump up I will select the first three frames for this where he's just leaving the floor and I will do right click create animation and I'll call this character underscore jump capital U up like that and hit enter next let's do the apex of the jump so we did the first three one two three let's now focus on this one that's number four number five and number six and right click on any of those and do create animation and call this one character underscore jump capital A apex and hit enter next the full so go to your jump and choose the next three it doesn't matter if you overlap previous ones as long as you don't go back too far I'm going to choose these three and do right click create animation and call this one character underscore jump capital F full and finally on the jump I'll choose the maybe the last two frames for the landing just these two frames only as long as you have more than one frame this will work I'm going to right click on either of those do create animation and call this one character underscore jump capital L land so you should now have six animation instruction files in this robot free area here if you hold shift and select all of them and now what we need to do is we need to tell which ones you want to loop so if you click on character idle we're going to want the breathing animation to loop forever so click on the animation instruction here and at the top right in the inspector click loop time ignore the jumps we do not want those to loop we've got that programmed especially but we do want the run to loop as well so go to the character run and hit loop now that's set up we can shift select all of these animation instruction files and drag them very carefully over to the left hand side where you can see the word animation inside the assets folder you see animation let go in there and if you click inside the animation folder you can see the other animations I have for this tutorial package and now you've got your own character ones there alongside the robot as well now go to window at the top of unity and go to animation click on animator not animation or parameter but animator like this and it should open up a new tab here called animator and just make sure you're in the animation folder within assets over here I'm going to need you to click once only on the word character AC. This is AC for animation controller. So click on character AC and this is what's currently powering your robot's animation. And all we're going to do is change the inputs for some of these nodes. There's plenty of other tutorials explaining how to set this all up. We're just editing it. So let's click on character idle and over here you can see at the moment it's using ghost idle, the animation instruction for ghost idle. If you click on this little circle thing over over there go to your one which is called character idle double click on that and you should see over here it now says character idle next let's go up to character run click once on character run you can see at the moment it says ghost run click on a circle and now change it to character run double click on that and character land as well click on character land and change the circle from over here to character jump 
land. Now the jump itself is some part of a blend node, which is slightly more complex. Double click on this blend node and it opens up a new tab over here. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and you can pan around these nodes by holding Alt on the keyboard and drag your middle mouse button and click once on the blend tree area over here and you can see it's using three different animation instruction sequences so let's change these from the ghost ones to the character one so click on a circle for ghost jump full and change it to character jump full change ghost jump apex to character jump apex by double clicking and change ghost jump up to character jump up now if you go back to your scene tab over here at the moment your character still looks like a ghost but if you hit play your character is there he's also enormous um, which we're going to change in a moment as well but it is working so let's fix a couple of these problems hit the play button at the top to come out of your play mode um, first of all let's fix the fact that he looks like a ghost over here if you click in your character in the main view area and you can change the sprite that it starts off with at the moment it's showing a jump sprite from a ghost one if you click on the circle here you can choose any of these it only shows this for a split second if anything anyway so just choose a, a colored jump one in here so do make sure you've done that and then if you double click on it it should disappear and now it says jump like that and you can also see the size of your robot is massive so we need to change that now we can't just click on the robot and resize it by clicking R on the keyboard because if we do that we change the size of the collision area for this robot as well and no matter how small we make it the collision areas all get resized and we mess all sorts of things up so we need to resize the image in a different way so go to in your assets area on the left go to where it says textures go to where it says your robot free and go to the PNG area and we can click on the very top most image make sure it's the very first image here my one's got a clear background and go to the bottom last image here select everything including these dark gray ones everything now on the right hand side the options have disappeared because it can't show the attributes for the sprites as well as the images but if you click on where it says 82 texture 2ds it then only highlights the texture ones not the gray ones and it's these that you can control the pixels per unit over here so in photoshop this robot is 567 pixels wide in here we want it to be smaller than that it is always best to paint at a larger image size as it's easy to reduce the size of it later on to reduce the image size in unity change the pixels per unit over here and to make your image smaller increase the number so i'm going to increase this to 400 which i previously worked out as being perfect and once you have changed it to 400, you must scroll down and click apply over here. If you cannot already see it on your screen, scroll down, hit apply. It will then load that request because you've done it to a lot of images at once. And now your character is the correct size. If you've painted your own character sprite set a different size to this, then you will need to play around with that number. So bigger than 100 will make it smaller. Smaller than 100 will make it bigger. But if you do that, you'll see the quality get reduced. So hopefully you've painted at a larger size. And and eventually you will get the correct number now if you hit play your character is working like this now the next thing to do is to change the speed that the character is animating at. you can see at the moment the frame rate's quite low for when he's breathing and for when he's jumping the frame rate seems quite low so you can come out of here and to change the speed that your character is animating at we'll need to go back into that scary animator area so click on the animator tab at the top and if you're still in the blend for the jump you can click on this arrow tab here for base layer and you can see these nodes again let's go to character idle and let's change the speed of the animation to one let's test that hit enter I'm just gonna hit play to preview how that looks he's breathing quite fast it looks like he's out of breath there so I'm just gonna um, change that down a little bit to 0.5 preview that and that's working and the rest of it is about as good as it's gonna get so you've now been able to uh, change the speed of your animations and your character is now customized